Sorry, hi. Sorry there, you were uh, just caught me reading the paper. Now, what paper is it? Let's have a little look. The Observer. Other good Sunday papers are available, of course. The Observer. Well, what does the word observer mean? The Observer. Any ideas? Now then, if you think back, one of our earlier videos on medicine, I mentioned a man called Hippocrates, and he's sometimes called the father of medicine. And one of the things he did was he was very interested in clinical observation. In other words, observing, looking carefully at the body. So, welcome to a new video. And this one, it's not about a man called Hippocrates, no, no, no. But it does continue some of his ideas, an example of continuity in medicine. Because what we're looking at today, ladies and gentlemen, is a doctor called Thomas Sydenham. Thomas Sydenham, an English doctor, and he's sometimes known as the English Hippocrates. There's the link. There's the continuity. Now, what did Sydenham do? Well, first of all, born in 1624, died in 1689. In other words, right during the Renaissance. Remember our previous video? I hope you do. We were looking at our old friend Vesalius cutting up the body and getting to know how the skeleton worked. Yes, the Renaissance. Sydenham lived after Vesalius. Now, he is specialising in a slightly different area of medicine. If you remember, Vesalius was all about anatomy. Sydenham was slightly different. So, what did he do? Let's have a think. He decides that it's important that doctors actually put practical experience above theoretical knowledge. What does that mean? It means that doctors actually do the tests, the experiments, they look for themselves, observe the observer, instead of just reading books. Now, if you remember, one of our key people in medicine was a man called Claudius Galen, and he lived in the Roman times, 100, 200 AD. And if you remember, Galen's books were followed all through the Middle Ages, all through the medieval period, even though in many cases Galen was wrong. Sydenham was not a fan of Galen. Oh, not a fan. Sorry. Sorry about that. Because if doctors are just following books, Sydenham saying, no, you need to look for yourself, do your own tests, do your own experiments, use your own experience. In a way, Sydenham is following on from Paracelsus and he's following on from Vesalius. Do your own tests. And it's very simple. Sydenham said, Number one, observe the patient. Look at the patient carefully. Record their symptoms. Write things down. Write down what is wrong with the patient that you have observed. Then make a diagnosis. We use that word today in medicine. Decide what you think is wrong with the patient and then try and treat the patient, try to cure whatever is wrong. Now to us that seems very, very obvious, but at the time it was quite new. We have come across a bit of change, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so yes, Sydenham is using Hippocrates' old ideas, but he's taking it a step further. Doctors used to do some of that, but they would often get involved in what was called prognosis, 
predicting what would happen next. Sydenham says, no, there's no need to do that. What we need to do is observe and then try and act on what we have observed. If you go to the doctor or you go to hospital today, they will take a full case history. They will write down what has happened to you. And it goes back to this time of Thomas Sydenham, the Renaissance. What else did Sydenham do? Well, he begins, notice that word, he begins the idea of spotting specific details of specific illnesses. He's beginning to show that there are differences. Okay, now, here we have a mixture. Now, Sydenham begins to use a sort of reddy brown mixture called laudanum and that was used to try and control pain the start of treatments laudanum for pain that's the first one he begins to realize that maybe iron can be used for anemia to deal with problems in the blood he begins to use a herb or a plant called quinine something that comes from the plant quinine and that begins to be used to treat a terrible tropical disease called malaria. And finally, Sydenham begins to describe the symptoms of a disease that we now know as gout. So he's beginning to be more scientific, looking at specific details of specific illnesses and then offering specific treatments. This is Thomas Sydenham. Then he puts it all in a book, 1676. His book was called Medical Observations. There's that key word again, looking very carefully. Medical Observations. And he encouraged doctors to read his book, use the ideas, but then do their own experiments, experience, take their own notes about the particular patient that they are treating. So there we have Thomas Sydenham. What factors were involved in his work? Any ideas? Well, he's living in the time of the Renaissance, a time of change, a time when people were beginning to question the old ideas and bring in new ideas, looking for new answers. Observation, looking carefully, communications, the printing press. He wrote his book, remember, Medical Observations, 1676. Communications always played a part, because remember, quinine, that was used to try and sort out the disease malaria, well, that came not in this country, did not come from this country. It was brought back to this country from the voyages of discovery that were going on as people sailed out and discovered other countries and they brought herbs and plants back. Communication. More scientific, a different scientific approach. Notice, Sidonim is saying, let's look at the body. Let's not blame God or spirits, or wear lucky charms, or pray. No, let's deal with the body. He was saying, take somebody's pulse. Deal with the body. Now, it was a start. It's another step. But of course, Sydenham's work did not mean that diseases could be cured. The problem could not be solved. Why not? Germs, I hear you cry. 1689 is when Sydenham died. They still had not worked out germ theory. So although Sydenham's work was a step forward, in the same way that Vesalius stepped forward in anatomy, Sydenham steps forward in the way doctors looked at the body. But it's still not the full answer. That could not come just yet. So there's Thomas Sydenham. 
okay? A great fan of Hippocrates, but not a fan, okay? Nice and short, this one. Nice and simple. Hopefully, it's been useful. Some of the stuff that's coming next, very, very important. You can't wait. See you soon. All the best.